It's great to have you all with us, whatever platform you're listening to us on. Uh, we're going to have sort of 40 minutes or so of learning all about how we can improve ourselves and our business. And I'm really pleased to uh, to welcome Julie Cameron from Action Coach this lunchtime. Hi, Julie. How are you? I'm good. Thanks, Steve. And yourself? Yeah, very well. Thanks. Very well. Yeah. Just saying before we start, it's been almost a year now since we've actually seen each other face to face. Where has that year gone? We were commenting on that this morning, that the older you get, the quicker that time seems to go, even though time is the one thing that you can't change. It just, it's that impression, isn't it? So, Absolutely. yeah. Yes, yeah, well, it's great, it's great to have you with us, and I look forward to hearing all about your aspect of, of coaching, uh, a bit about you and your your background before you came to Action Coach Judy, and also, uh, of course, today's International Women's Day, uh, which is, is. One, one of the reasons we've got you here, to, to hear about, you know, how you've worked with many business owners across Birmingham to help them develop and grow their business, so I'm sure we'll have lots of questions for you around that. Perfect. But just just before we delve in, for those of you who are listening to us this lunchtime, uh, you may well be on the LinkedIn platform, you might be on the Facebook platform, or of course, logged into us here on, on the Zoom. Uh, wherever you're listening to us or watching us from, please do ask any questions and I'll we'll make sure that uh, we've got a colleague of mine monitoring the questions in the background. We'll try and get those questions fed through during the live lunch and learn. If that's not possible, please do still connect with us and I can guarantee that either myself or Julie will reach out to you and uh, and let you know uh, and, and connect and respond to your queries. And we, we've had a number of lunch and learns now, Julie, over the last 12 months, haven't we? We've, we've actually gone international as well. Yep. So um, it'd be great to hear where you're, where you're watching, where you're listening to us from, and you know, we'd love to know how far we, we're reaching this, this lunchtime. But today is the 8th of March, it's International Women's Day, and we've got Julie Cameron with us. So I want to sort of start off, Jody, by you know, jumping in at the deep end. In, in your bio, you say you've got a passion for the hospitality and events sector. Tell us a bit about that. <laughs> I do. Um, so, you know, let's start for that great, um, that great song, let's start at the very beginning. Absolutely. Okay, let's love, start love from the very very meaning in a minute, Julie. I was going to say, if you've got a coffee, it might take me a while. <laughs> um, <laughs> so literally, I have worked in the hospitality and event sector for the last, what, 20 plus years? Um, basically, the passion started when I was about 13, 14. Um, I'm from York originally, so Northern Lass, um, and the Yorkshire accent might come out, so my apologies, well, I'm not really. But um, <laughs> and my dad's friend had a little cafe next to the Minster in York, and I was very lucky to get a Saturday job and um, went and worked as a, as a waitress for £1.25 an hour. Um, I was making millions, obviously. Um, and, times. Yeah, no, exactly. But I just, um, I live, I'm a big believer that people go into um, hospitality to serve. You know, it mm. sounds very kind of archaic in a way to serve but people go into a restaurant a bar a cafe whatever with a with a dream in mind whether it's that hot cup of tea whether it's that you know ATP cup of tea pot of tea for one or whether it's that Michelin star restaurant where they're paying hundreds and hundreds of pounds everybody has a dream when they go into a place of hospitality and it was my kind of role my responsibility to make that dream come true um, and that's what I love about hospitality and events it's seeing somebody's eye like of when you give them that cup of tea or when you have realized that that wedding that they've always dreamed for has come true um and it sounds very disney-esque and i am a big kind of disney fan unfortunately or fortunately for me um and so my passion i suppose for hospitality went from there after a trip over to america to disneyland um, in Orlando um, and loved the fact that nothing was too much trouble, loved the fact that everybody had a smile on their face, loved that kind of whole, you felt so special and that was again what I wanted to make people feel like when they came and were served by me. So um, again the passion extended, I left school, did my A-levels um, and then you know you come to that crutch point, you know what do you actually want to do with life and for me it was um, going into hospitality, it was a no brainer really. So I went up to Glasgow, studied um, hospitality management for four years, uh, realized a dream of mine, which was to work at Disney. Um, so I worked at Disneyland Paris for a summer, uh, for 10 mm. weeks. Yeah, I think, yeah. We learn about each other, you see, I didn't know that. Yeah, see, you learn something new every day. Absolutely. So, um, which was amazing. I worked in the hotel aspect um, in the Hotel Newport Bay, one of the largest hotels on the site. Um, and it was an amazing experience really to kind of, I think the beauty of Disney in, in Europe is that there's so many cultures that come to visit. In America, it's very, you know, 
the British speaking, you know, you, you're quite, there's quite, a, you know, a, a certain type of person that goes over to America, whereas in Europe, because it was so accessible to all, you know, you had people from Spain driving up, you had people from the UK coming across, there was French people, there was Italian people, it was very much a mix of cultures. Um, and people's, again, expectations on hospitality varied depending on what culture they came from. So it was an interesting 10 weeks. I loved it. I absolutely loved it. Um, and then I finished university and um, you went to work. You at university as well? Say again? You were doing that whilst you were at university? Yes. yes. Wow. Wow. So I did that for 10 weeks in one of the summer um, placements that we needed to do. Um, when I got the job myself, they said you need to speak French, but it was more like, uh, where is the toilet that you would maybe mm -hmm. need to respond? Um, it was maybe a little bit more than that. So my French kind of increased <laughs> quite <laughs> considerably sure, if I I'm wanted sure. to know where I was going. Yeah. But it was amazing, Steve, do you know what I mean? And again, it's that that dream that, you know, dreams come true. Um, I was actually working, and I suppose this is where the, the equality aspect of gender equality quality and national women's day kind of comes in so i worked um in guest relations um so basically did a lot of baggage handling um so a lot of luggage lifting things like that and yeah. as a woman it was the french men in particular didn't like it um right. you know so there is still elements of that i'm sure out there um but whether that's a gender stereotypical kind of reaction who knows but you know or a cultural thing we talk a lot at Action Coach about understanding your why and what really drives you every, every day in whatever role you do. And it sounds like that's been a bit of a golden thread throughout your career, yes. Julie, in terms of that passion for helping others yes. is what drives you in whatever job you've gone or role yeah. you've gone on to. Yeah, definitely. And I think that that's why it's linked straight into business coaching, because, you know, fundamentally we want to help business, business owners realise those dreams and that you know, that why, like you say, that why they've gone into business and why they've set up on their own. There, there is a dream at the end of it, whether that's that big yacht off the south coast of France or whether it's that family holiday to Disney and being able to afford it and take time away. There is a dream. There is a, a reason why they've gone into business and business coaching helps them recognise that dream and make it a reality. So it's not a dream anymore. And that's... Mm -hmm. Combining those two dreams, Judy, just down the road, parked is probably the wrong word. I think Maud, just down the road at David from where I am, as you know, I'm down in Kent, is, uh, is a Disney cruise ship. Ah. Uh, combine the cruise ship with Disney. Uh, if you can get me an entry into that, Judy, that would be absolutely fantastic. But, uh, you know, <laughs> Not a problem at all. They are constantly looking for, they call them cast members. Yes, so um, yeah, it's, yeah. it's fascinating. But it's an ama it was an amazing experience and one that's there. You know, it's still there up on my top 10. Um, I left university and that's when my journey kind of really started. I had that, again, you know, we all as business owners come to that junction in life, you know, and depending on you have that decision to make what path you go down to, whether it's become an employee or become the business owner. And for me, leaving university, I had that decision to make. I got on the graduate program for Marriott, which was really highly sought after. So I got a place on that, that graduate program. But I also got a job at Buckingham Palace. To yes, go. Now, you mentioned Royal Connection, Julie, early on this morning, and I, I am not over Winfrey, you'll know that. Um, but yes, I was intrigued to learn more about these Royal Connections that you have. Yeah, so like I say, I had that decision to make. So um, the food branch of uh, Buckingham Palace were looking for a purchaser. So somebody should go in, purchase food for the family, as well as the hundreds of staff that they have on a mm -hmm. daily basis working at Buckingham Palace. And you come to that junction, don't you, that you have a decision that, you know, you either go down a route of a once in a lifetime opportunity working at the palace or, you know, you go again, in a way, once in a lifetime opportunity going down the graduate scheme. But I chose the palace mainly because I just didn't think that I would get that opportunity again um, in my career. And I absolutely loved it. Absolutely loved it. So I purchased um, food for the staff as well as the family um, was very lucky to go traveling with the queen so when she went and stayed at Balmoral I did too Sandringham um, Windsor and so on and I was there for about two and a half years so um, again like I say amazing opportunity um, very traditional very um, in its setup obviously it seeped in history um, very respectful of that um, and again, you know, from from a female perspective, going into um, the environment, you know, a lot has changed over the last 10 years plus mm. at the palace. You know, you now have 
female footmen, so foot people that do that. Whereas when I was there, it was very deemed as a male role. And equally, you know, again, for um, housemaids, it was yeah. a female role. Yeah. Of all employees that are steeped in institutions and traditionalism, I think you know the, the royal household is going to be one of the up at the top there. Yeah. Um, my, my, one of my questions, Julian, it may well have you know linked into this in many ways, but thinking of International Women's Day and the career you've had before Action Coach, because we'll come on to that in a moment, ha, what have been the biggest challenges as a women woman in your industry in that industry that you faced and had to overcome? Oh, good question. I think for hospitality in general, um, the hotel industry was very much deemed as a a male kind of dominated um, management level. So at the, the hotel management kind of level, it was very male orientated. And again, it, it's something that's changed quite considerably over the last 20 years, uh, 15, 20 years. And I think you see more and more women getting to those positions. You know, it's still a battle. Um, but there again, you can also argue that on the other uh, on the other spectrum, you've got males trying to be, you know, high in, in female dominated industries. So, you know, it's, it's that dual edged sword, really, isn't it? Yeah. You know, um, but it's through perseverance, Steve. Do you know what I mean? If you want Absolutely. something hard, you know, if you want something enough, then you will move those mountains and you will break those ceilings and you will you will achieve it um, because that's the determination that's in you. And that's as business owners, that's where the, that passion drives us um, and that determination to succeed. And that's what we help people yeah. enhance and let them grow. Um, Absolutely. And we'll, we'll come on to Action Coach. I've got one more question about your past okay. before we go on to the future, okay. Julie. Okay. Um, just it, it, again, in your bag, you said, you know, I think about all the children who've gone to school today, your, yours and, and mine have all gone back in. We've had that challenge over the year, haven't we, of on off yeah. homeschooling and uh, that, that parental guilt that you and I have both talked about off camera, you know, the working and wanting to support our children at the, at the same time. And in, in your biography, you say you understand the desire for work life balance. Do you want to just share a bit more about what you mean by that? And, and I guess as a parent as well, you know, and a woman in business, how, how does that reflect? Yeah, I think, you know, from working in hospitality, my friends and I always have a bit of a joke. Um, so, you know, hospitality is not a nine to five job. You know, it's not a Monday to Friday, nine to five job can be some roles in it. But the, the role, the operation side of it is never Monday to Friday, nine to five. And, and, you know, I look back to some of the weeks that I've worked, you know, 70, 80 hours plus, you know, because you love it and you have that passion for it. Um, and now my work life balance, it becomes about priorities and about, um, you know, wanting to switch that laptop off at a certain point and wanting to have that downtime with my family and recognizing how important it is to so many people and that they can't or don't necessarily have the tools to be able to or the skills to be able to switch off mm -hmm. and again that's what I like to help with because it's so important for you for your mental well-being and for you for family for you know life's too short if anything this last year has taught us is that you know life can be taken away it's precious so why aren't you spending as much time as possible with your family and your friends, creating those memories for future? Um, I think people go into business thinking they, they're going to achieve that straight away. <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah. And it's not, it's hard. It's hard work yeah. and it's hard. You know, we were just having a, a chat beforehand, weren't we, Steve, you know, about the fact that, you know, working from home still at the moment is really hard not to distinguish between home and work. Yes, indeed, indeed. Because the laptop's always there, mm. you know, so it's very tempting at a weekend to pick it up and open it up and, you know, shoot yeah. off a couple of emails, you know, it's, um, it's really hard, you know, it's, but it's something those... that we have to have self-discipline. Yes, indeed. And especially in those first few years of business, um, yeah. you know, as you, you know, that passion, but also that sense of that, that pressure that, to make the business work. Yeah. Um, but I, I remember, Julie, almost a year ago to the day, uh, driving up to the office in Birmingham from my home down here in Kent. Uh, I used to do that commute every week up, up and down yep. the M1, M25, M6, and I haven't missed it. I have to say, I've missed you, but I've not missed that journey. Um, <laughs> but I remember driving up uh, one Monday, I think it was, and um, you know, Boris was then saying, if you can work from home, make sure you do. So I, I popped into a family member's, grabbed what I needed, and uh, I, that's the last time I was up, up north from here anyway. Right. I know it's not up north for you, but up north for me. Um, but we went into that lockdown and, and that's really, as you say, really made us all reevaluate, hasn't it? You know, what's important to us, both in our business and, and in life generally. And I know that uh, you've seen this slide before, Julie, but it really 
took us on this journey, didn't it? This journey yeah. of self-discovery in terms of what we, you know, what, what's important to us and what's important to us. Um, yeah. And, and I, I think what, what struck me is, you know, you and I sitting here, we've worked for the same business for the last 12 months and longer, but we've still been on a very personal journey. And every, every one of our listeners, every one of our clients will have also been on a very personal journey. And it, it's been an interesting journey of self-discovery, but also not without its challenges. No, and I think I think we all um, last year when you, you know Boris turned around and said, I "Sound like I know him on first term basis, don't I, Boris?" Um, <laughs> but when we got that kind of you know stay at home, protect the NHS, you know, and all of that, and I think a lot of businesses, in, ourselves included, you know, put our heads into the duvet and said, "Well, it'll be over in a couple of weeks." You know, it's it's like you say the anxiety, the denial, you know, the fear, Absolutely. you know, it's that yeah. personal, you know, the guilt, everything, you know. But I think it, there came a point, maybe about a week after it happened, we kind of took stock at Action Caption, kind of went, no, this is going to last a bit longer, yes. and what can we do to help? Yeah, and that's you know? the point we um, we brought this side up, didn't we? we? We put this together almost a year ago now to help yeah, it is. other business owners um with, with the journey but but you know you are um you are only female coach in the organization in action coach Birmingham and it's yeah. you know we love having you as part of the business what sort of challenges have you been working through with some of your clients maybe as today's international women's day maybe focus on some of the, the women in business that you've been working with yeah. you know, I, I, I'd be interested actually to know we've never actually had, had the conversation you know are, are the women in business having different challenges to the men the male clients that we you know, we we have been coaching over the last 12 months, but what sort of issues or challenges have you been coaching for, Julie? I think the main challenge, I think myself personally, and a lot of the women out there is um, the family juggle. You know, yes. it, it has been, you know, I mean, Steve, you know, you've been homeschooling, you know, but from a from a whole homeschooling point of view, the first lockdown, um, you know, was challenging. You know, the first lockdown, it was absolutely, I suppose, novelty factor in a way, you know, the weather was lovely, there was the novelty factor, you know, of the fact, oh, we've been told to stay home, this is lovely, you know, it's, it's kind of something new, something different, um, we can Dare do I this. Say that the first time, I, I think, certainly from my own experience, homeschooling, it was a lot less pressurised, because it was yeah. seen as a, as a short-term fix. Yes, um, yes. But you, you know, Julie, I've got twins, and the phrase I always say to them is, there's two of you and one of me, I can only, well, I can only mark one book at a time, you know. Yes, no, <laughs> and, no. And do a job, you know. Exactly. And, you know, from our point of view, you know, we've, we've got a little um, little boy, you know, and is our only child. So you're feeling that that total like pressure as a parent to spend time with them because we've got nobody else to play with. Yeah. And nobody else to spend yeah. time with and yourself and, and my husband, Glenn, who, you know, we are action coach Birmingham, you know. <laughs> so it's, it's a challenge that you're wanting. It's that guilt factor, isn't it? You're wanting to spend time on business, but yet you're wanting to spend time with them and I think speaking to the female business owners that I you know that I coach on a regular basis that was the main kind of challenge in a way is more the personal aspect rather than the business challenging yes because we again you know fundamentally it's that juggle it's a juggling act Steve that's what it is and some people yeah. are better at it than others um so it's using our default diaries it's using our mindset you know it's it's not putting the guilt factors staying above that line you know we are not to blame we are you know I didn't do that you know it's accepting what we can do and sit doing what we can do to the best of our ability and making sure that we are planning planning was key for me what's ahead you know making sure my diary was managed you know and those were the tips and hints that I was giving to my clients which which helped and worked and that's the the thing to get through it I must admit this after this morning when I dropped Harry at school um I did a little dance across the road um in front of another parent who was dropping her child off she stopped to let me across and I did a little dance um you know but then we were saying earlier I've got that first day nerves for him you know is yeah. he enjoying it and again there'll be so many women out there that are feeling you know a sense of relief that they don't have to homeschool today but yet that guilt that you're feeling like that and again, yeah. it's yeah. it's a case of understanding, accepting and moving on. Yes, it's juggling all those emotions that are going on inside, isn't yeah. it? The, the sense of yeah. relief, the guilt, the, you know, the, the pleasure that the children are back really where they belong, where they need to be. But yeah. also, you know, I'm sure I talk of my own experience, you know, sort of, you know, missing them, missing the company. Of missing the, the children. I'll tell you what I'm missing, Julie. I'm missing the cups of coffee. <laughs> As you know, I had my two trained over, over the lockdown to make coffee in the kettle and bring it into daddy while I was working, you know. I love it. I love it. But I no, I mean, 
we've all been on this journey you know like it says lockdown you know the woman and now is the time to act now is the time that you've got your time back you can be more um kind of um strict on your time Mm -hmm. you know you have a chunk of time during the day now before school and after you know before during the school hours that you can really concentrate on the growth for your business um, and moving it forward and and going back to the slide on here we know we've talked a lot um we've done it several times and i think we're locked down three aren't we we're in we are uh, but we've done the warm-up several times a warm hat and now it now is it feels like it's the real show yes. you know we've, we've got this six week window golden window of opportunity to make sure that we ourselves as business owners are mentally physically in the right place but also that our business if we haven't done it now we yeah. need to jolly well get on and get you know get the marketing messages changed get the staff prepared to come back into the business etc cetera, etc cetera, and you know make sure that we're not trading at the back of the race but we're leading from the front exactly and i think there's a few challenges you know that we'll all face as business owners you know is one in employee engagement you know these people have been at home i always say you know, lockdown and being on furlough and things like that amazing kind of you know help to businesses but actually you know it's the first time we as people have been given that opportunity to sit at home and to think you know you're not allowed to go on holiday you can't go and mix with anybody you can't do anything you've just got to sit at home and do nothing when was the last time any of us had that opportunity and there's that tendency sometimes to maybe overthink you know but it's given time for a lot of people to think. So therefore, when they come back to work, are they going to be the same people that you put on furlough at the beginning of um, lockdown one, lockdown two, lockdown three, whenever, you know, how engaged actually are they going to be with the company? You know, and it's looking at that and the tools that are out there to help you encourage employee engagement, you know, and like you said, it's the marketing. There are so many new businesses opening up, you know, again, people have had time. Yeah. And that spirit of entrepreneurism is out there and it's amazing. You know, I'm really excited about it. But equally, if you have, you know, six personal assistants, for example, you know, virtual assistants that have set up. So six of them, you know, why would you choose you? What is your unique selling point? What is stepping, making you stand out from the crowd? Why should I come to you and not go to the other five? And those are the things that you need to be thinking. You need to be putting that out there now so that, people know you're there <laughs> you know yeah. we always say it's communication isn't it communication's key absolutely and that's that's that strip that's along the bottom isn't it constant communication with staff suppliers existing customers yeah. prospects and i've always said to my clients the one thing we want to make sure every business we're working with comes in comes out of a lockdown with what they went in with yes. um, but but as you say you know it has for many business owners i remember trying to call business owners before we went into lockdown going back a couple of years and the one constant response we always used to get was i haven't got time i'm too busy at the moment to talk to you um, well, you know, the last 12 months, as you quite rightly say, Julia, has, has presented all of us with that opportunity and to really think about, you know, where our business is going, where are we going personally and where is our business going? What What's that vision? What's that destination point? And a uh, lovely little story I, I always reflect back on is the beginning of lockdown last year, which was just before Mother's Day, which is obviously next weekend. Uh, and a florist we were working with at the time who was desperately running out of stock, you know, as, as things yeah. dried up and she went from flowers to um pot plants and, and struggled through Mother's Day on that basis and then went into distributing gifts. But what she had in her business was a man and a van. Uh, and so she teamed up with a local greengrocer that didn't have the man and van and started doing fresh fruit and veg boxes along with flowers and other things in, in Birmingham. And I, I love that story because it's such a clear, I mean, again, business led by a woman, but, you know, it's a clear example of where that business owner has taken time out to think, how can I survive? Yeah. And also, what other opportunities are there going forwards? Yeah, um, and, uh, exactly, Steve. I mean, you know, we've worked with um, a lady who's um, an artist, you know, and she does wire art. Yeah. And um, obviously, you know, she was doing classes and so on before lockdown. And, you know, and her business went from was booming and then went to nothing overnight. because She mm-hmm. could no longer do the classes. It's not something that you can do online. You know, all of this, you know. It's taken a time to get back, but she's now, you know, working with a florist and putting a wire rose into bouquets so they people have that as a constant you know the flowers will look beautiful you know etc etc you know but to have something that's lasting is that why a rose and they look absolutely stunning and again it's thinking outside the box you know what sets that florist apart from another mm-hmm. florist where you get that isn't that beautiful isn't that good keepsake isn't that more memorable and i would go to them because it sets them apart from other businesses yeah. 
And and just thinking again, going back a year for me, or more than a year now, Judy, I remember having a conversation with your husband, Glenn, about, you know, shall we take Action Coach online? Shall we do some e-learning? And I was like, I don't want to be on screen. I don't want to do anything online. I'd much rather do it face to face. And, you know, lo, lo and behold, it was forced upon us all. Um, <laughs> but I do think um, as, as the world is shifting, tell you what, Julia, I never forget my kid's birthday party last year on Zoom, 35 children on Zoom. It was, it was like one of our team meetings, only 10 times worse. But, <laughs> but do you think the way we work flexibly now, and I think a lot of it is here to stay for, for small and medium and, large, and corporates, is that going to help... Um, help towards gender parity in the workplace with with the challenges that many women folk, you know juggle yes yeah no I do actually I'm you know when you say it like that I say yes it will because I know for me personally you know I I like to take my little boy to school and I like to pick him up from school it's something that's really important to me um and we all have different priorities and, and different things that are important but that is fundamentally one of the things that I love about having our own business is the flexibility of the fact that I can do that um, but if then I was going into Birmingham for a meeting, then you're probably looking at me able to have like one meeting a day, maybe two tops, depending on yeah. whether, mm-hmm. you know, the timing and how the location aspect. Whereas now I can book in four meetings a day, five meetings a day yeah. because they're all on Zoom and they're back to back and I can be anywhere in the country. So Zoom has that place and it will always have that place of juggling. And I think it's apparent in both male and female businesses, you know, you know, it will give people that flexibility. Do I miss face to face? Of course I do. Um, I'm a people person. You know, I, I read people's body language, how they're smiling, how they're looking, eye contact. You know, the whole thing. You know, you can't yeah. necessarily do that on Zoom unless you're sitting right up and you're looking at the spot. You know, we all know those tricks. But I can't see. You know, whether your hands are clasped, whether you're holding. You know, it's all those tips of body language to read. You know, I go networking, and I say I miss that ten minutes prior to the networking group starting of having a coffee in my hand and talking to people asking how their week's gone you know you don't necessarily get that opportunity to do that on zoom no and i I remember when uh well before you know lockdown happened and we went on to this you know sort of new way of working you did say at that time you you can only give so many hours to the business because you had other commitments and it has you know you're a great example of where it's opened up the opportunity for you to get more involved yeah and i think that that's what you know, is key. You know, you know as well as I do. We run a, a female, a, a women in business a profit club every yes, two weeks yes. on Wednesday um, at ten o'clock. Shameless plug um, you know, <laughs> online. And you know, one of the ladies asked me, "Will we go back to face to face?" And I'm like, "I have no intention whatsoever of making that a face to face meeting." I do think there's an there's a um, a benefit of meeting of maybe every three months. And having a coffee with the ladies just so that we get to know each other a little bit better but for the actual logistics of running a networking group at 10 o'clock till 11 30 it just works so much better online absolutely you know? i was going to come on to the the women in sorry ladies. no no, no it's fine because I, we, we'll come back to it later on because i know you i want to be, ask you a bit more about it and also i know we're going to talk about it at the end in terms of the, the offer we've got on at the moment yeah um, yeah but i absolutely agree you know that that hybrid model has to be the way forward in terms of it's great to go and see people face to face. You learn so much more from a business by seeing not just the business owner, but the people around them. Yeah. Um, but then the, ha- you know, the opportunity to work online and, and use Zoom and other platforms is, is amazing, isn't it? In terms of not just, well, for, for anybody, any business owner, male or female, you know, it helps to narrow that, you know, sort of make it more power, what am I trying to say? Make it more equal and get that parity gap closed. Yeah, no, and I still think that there is, I mean, you know, I think one thing that come across to me when obviously International Women's Day is the fact how many women do get behind it. You know, did you realise there was an International Men's Day, Steve? No, I didn't. And I was going to ask, well, not ask you, but I was going to look at it later because I I was intrigued. I mean, just before we started, I know that Women's International Women's Day started in 1911. It's been going for a long time. It has really only got you know, sort of a um, passion behind it since 2011, it, 2001, it was relaunched, I think, in, yeah. in that era. Yeah. and it's really taken off, hasn't it, in the last yeah. 20 years? Yeah. But I didn't know there was a men's. Yes, there is, apparently in November. So um, they're going to utilise it to talk about um, men's mental health, which is obviously a subject that has had a lot of publicity over the last years, last cut the year or so, but equally it's a, a topic that I believe needs to be more out there about men's yeah. mental health um, and well-being. We're same with female, you know, but I think women are more inclined to talk 
um, and to Absolutely. share and to engage in that. Whereas men, it's it's not the done thing, as she says yeah. in invert commas, um, yeah. for a lot of men. So I think to encourage people to talk is a massive thing. And I know you're a mental health first aider. Um, Absolutely. And it's, it comes from know. having challenges of my own in my life in the past. But, you know, yeah. mental health for men is the biggest killer in men under 40 you know yeah, it's, exactly uh, i'm so pleased to hear there is a, an international men's day and if there is a focus on, on men's mental health it is so important you know yeah. but it just touching you know when we've talked while we're talking about international women's day what sort of challenges do you think there still are for women as they uh, go into business of their own on a, as a solopreneur or join a corporate you know what in your experience having worked in both areas what what sort of challenges do you think women are still facing in 2021 um, I think a lot of the challenges are still there that they were facing um, 10 years plus ago. So, you know, I, I think as, a, as an employer, you know, they struggle sometimes with, like I said, it's that work-life balance, you know, how committed is that? is that female person or, you know, do they have family? You know, and they're questions that don't necessarily get asked, but are still there. Yeah, I mean, I, my, my sister lives in London and she was applying for jobs in the last six months and she sent me some of the questions that came across in an application form, you know, are you pregnant? Mm -hmm. uh, and and do you, you know questions that really shouldn't be asked in this? No, in this era, it shouldn't know, be. It will be. Why, why is why should there be any difference between um, you know are you pregnant? Absolutely, you know don't ask this <laughs> question. You know, but men are taking paternity leave. You know, there's the opportunity for men to stay at home after they've had a child. So you know, why shouldn't the questions be generic across the board? I think that's the problem. Is that if the questions were asked to both men and women. It wouldn't necessarily obviously there would be an issue yeah. but equally it's that quality aspect isn't it you know so you know i could say steve is you know is your your partner pregnant you know what's your what's your expectations you know men would be up and up or all wouldn't they what's your expectations um of once the baby's born you know are you taking two weeks paternity or are you taking six months you know women have faced that challenge for for decades yeah so it's yeah. great that this you know international women's day is, is raising awareness of these issues that sadly are still there you know yeah. albeit not as bad as they used to be they're still there and still they are still there them. and and you know and you just have to look at you know some sporting events with prize money you know men get paid you know a lot more than women do you know i think tennis was the last one that springs to my mind you know the you know the world's number one in tennis for the men for winning a um competition like say for example the australian open would get paid you know x and the women would get paid significantly less but why you know and they were saying oh it's because people want to watch men play tennis they don't want to watch women play tennis well is that just your perception or is that true yeah, you know show me the test and measure yes. and i will be there indeed the same with women's world cup i seem to remember 18 yes. months ago you know and being broadcast on the mainstream tv channels yeah. um, for the first time and there's a big up or you know well, but big you know thing in the press about it actually being broadcast and it should have been done for years you know why why hasn't it been done but um yeah. You know, it's great, great that things and issues are taking place now to try and close that that gap in, in terms of women in business, um, Julie, and, and the conversations you've had and the people you've met over the last 12 months or, or longer. Um, what sort of advice would you give to any woman right now thinking of stepping away from the comfort zone of being an employee to setting up their own business? You know, as a, as a woman, as a female business coach and somebody who's perhaps, um, you know, had an insight into many other business journeys of, of women entrepreneurs, what advice would you give? Do it. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, I think it, the advice is the same for whether it's male or female. You know, yeah. have you got a strong business idea? You know, what is it that you're wanting to do? What is it that makes you think that you can do this? And it's mm. all down to, again, a bit of mindset, but what is your, what is your business idea? You know, do you have a plan? what's your vision what's your mission you know what's your end dream what's your end goal you know um again what is the product or the service that you're offering it's more about the business idea whether it rather than whether it's run by a man or a woman to be honest Steve you know and I think that that's what goes out to everybody you know what sets you apart from everybody else and what is your business idea is it going to make you millions or is it a side hustle you know I do think that women in a way are good at the side hustles <laughs> yeah because it's that juggling it's back to that juggling kind Absolutely. of thing Absolutely. isn't it yeah but you know that's not saying that those side hustles can't become bigger business opportunities mm, indeed indeed and, and do you think there are any particular industries where women are still facing perhaps 
more stereotypical prejudice or difficulties than other industries, Julie? From you? Yeah, it's, it's quite funny you mentioned that. So a lady that um, I went to university with um, has actually gone into construction and architecture. And um, she actually has, she's one of the only female business owners um, around in that kind of area, in that industry, because construction and that is, is notoriously a male dominated industry. Um, you know, so she is out there breaking those kind of stereotypical kind of ideas. Um, I think there's a lot of industries out there, Steve, that some are more female prone, some are more male prone, you know, um, when I say nurse, do you automatically male or female? Absolutely female, of course, but that's from stereotypical historic knowledge, isn't it? That's yeah. the challenge, and that's what yeah. we're going to get over. Yeah, exactly. So if I said construction, you automatically think male. Well, I've come from, you know, as you know, pre pre uh, action coach. I was working HS two, and I was just about to say, I was I was pleasantly surprised to see how that had changed. Yeah. Um, and how many I more mean, female architects and, and civil engineers there are, but it's still a challenge. Yeah. And at the end of the day, change doesn't happen overnight. No, indeed. It's about educating people and yeah. about giving them the, the the knowledge to make those changes, mm. you know, and saying that it's OK. I mean, you know, it's OK to go in that industry. We encourage it. You know, my sister um, was training to become an architectural technician. She did night school building studies. She was the only female in a group of 30 men. You know, and we're talking, you know, 30 years ago, but still, yeah. mm. you know, how many, how has that changed? That's changed through people like, say, my, for example, my sister saying to other girls and other women out there that it's okay to be in those industries. But equally for a male to go into nursing, it's okay for other men to go into nursing, to go into those female dominated kind of industries. Um, you know, again, I think it's just the issues that women face is that kind of inequality where pays concerns get better, but it still needs more. You know, it still needs more. And that's what I'm passionate about, that women. I believe that when women get together, magic happens, Steve. That sounds very cheesy. Very Disney. Um, I'm a Disney person, you know. I know. Well, let, it, let, me come, let me come on to that, because I've got a couple of questions just around that for you, Julie. Okay. So you know, going back to your Women in Business Profit Club or Business Club that you, you run, Julie, um, it's ladies only networking group. Yeah. You want to tell me a bit more about how that works. And how important is it for women to lift each other up and have that give that mutual support in yeah. the absence of men in, in the room? You know, how, how so, so it came apart. I mean, we run um, a profit club on an evening that's um, mixed. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You know, you host that Steve for us. And um, it's a great kind of um, platform, I think, for solopreneurs and business leaders that can have a strategic kind of um, impact on the way that their business is focused on the way that their business is going. And I, as action coach, um, kind of got invited to an action coach women's group. So it was of female coaches within action coach. And we all met up um, and it was, it was basically, we, we asked what is the purpose behind this? And it was to empower women. Okay, to be the best that they can be, to give them a safe environment that sometimes we don't necessarily get to ask those questions, to kind of not sound silly, not to to kind of, um, you know, and you do have women that can do that in any group that they attend. But this was kind of primarily that safe space. So what I wanted to do, and it really inspired me thinking that there was women out there that don't necessarily join groups because of the fear of being not being able to have that voice, not being able to ask those questions. And so um, I said to you and Glenn, you know, the rest of the team, you know, what do you think? Do you think we'll get traction? And yes, we have, you know, on average, we have between 15 and 20 ladies on each every fortnight. And one of the things I first say, you know, is, you know, this is a safe space. You know, you can ask any question, no questions, daft, no, you know, comments, silly, you know, we've all been there and we've all kind of, um, had these thoughts in our heads and maybe we haven't been given the opportunity to say them and to talk about them so please feel free and that's my aim is to give that safe environment whilst learning about business so the the, the educational aspect of it is the same as what you run on a mixed session you know um and women inspire women we empower women you know we you know, I'm not, I'm not saying that men don't get women and women don't get men in any way, shape or form. But women do get women the, the, the more empathetic, I suppose, to struggles and situations that are outside the working 
kind of environment um you know they get the, the juggling the family you know the other thing we all giggle about is this time last year can we all remember that you know that um zoom meeting that was on um the bbc news or sky news and the guy was speaking and his kids came running in yes. and you had the nanny or the wife or whoever running out you know mm-hmm. normally if if i don't have my little seven-year-old pop up here there's something wrong with a meeting, you know, obviously. And it's become the socially acceptable norm, right? And I yeah, hope in a way... Dogs, kids, you name it, we've seen it. Yeah. And I hope in a way it doesn't... That empathy doesn't go away. Yes, I completely agree. Completely you agree. know? And I think that the women's group that we have has, has helped that. So it's it's about women empowering women and helping women to achieve and be the best. Um, but like I said, the content and stuff that we do is exactly the same as what the mixed group does. So which kind of, you know, that's our profit club. So you'll see on the screen um, about our solopreneur kind of package. So it's looking at, you know, the solopreneurs that are out there, those that business maybe just set up in business. So we have our profit club, which is every two weeks. So you can join the ladies or the mixed, you know, mix it up a little bit, meet a group of people. Yeah, so in theory, <laughs> yeah, no, but in theory, you're meeting over 40 potential business people that can help you grow your business or through referrals or you know and as I always say it's not necessarily who you know in the room it's who they know out of the room because of influence absolutely right exactly you know we also run our book club you know again you know one of the myths about business coaching is that it's expensive you know and it can be you know I, you know somebody wants to pay me four grand five grand a month absolutely I'm going to shake your hands up but I will make your business grow and I'll help you grow but we start off with, you know, with solopreneur special that works out at £50 a week. Now, if £50 a week, to me, is totally affordable. If you go out for dinner at least once a week, you know, with your family, you're looking at spending more than that. So why wouldn't you reinvest it back into your business? Absolutely. Yeah. You know? And at the time when we haven't been able to go out and spend 40, 50 quid on a meal, why not spend it on your business? Yeah. You know? Exactly, exactly. You know, so you've got your book club, which is a group of um, business professionals that come together and they've read a business book, you know, and that group, that book is chosen by the group. It's very much a social group and it's, it's awesome. You know, um, we've had authors join us, you know, we've had, um, you know, some people don't like the book. It's absolutely fine, you know, but the aim is to learn and to look at the strategies that have made that person successful or you get from the book and then you can implement them into your business if, if there's somebody in the room that doesn't somebody who doesn't like the book it makes it so, so much more interesting as a conversation because we want them exactly. to know why you know yeah. tell us more tell yeah. us more because people get different things and again that goes back to the, the profit club people get different things from it you yeah. know a challenge that you're facing today may have been a challenge that somebody else had faced last week or last month and they came out of it they came out of it the other side so why shouldn't they help that peer-to-peer coaching is so important these days and giving that platform that people can talk is is invaluable. So, and then the other bit of the solopreneur package is the growth club. So this is um, how to increase your business by 30% or 30 times your business. And it's, you know, a little bit, um, I always say it's, it's coaching. It is a pure coaching. So it's watching videos, it's doing your learnings, and then dropping into a, a coaching session every week you get access to the coaching portal and we do a 90 day planning session you know it's it's awesome value um you know and i would be absolutely would love to talk to anybody who is wanting to learn a little bit more male or female and the great thing about having you with action coach julie as well is that you know there are some women who may want a female coach and that's perfectly yeah. acceptable as well you know of it's about having that person who you feel comfortable with coaching you alongside of the business. Course. And I suppose, Steve, that's, again, that's the beauty of the fact that there's myself, Glenn, and, you know, yourself in the fact that one size doesn't fit all. It's about relationship building, yeah. you know. So, you know, I'm very much into the team engagement. It's my background, you know, team engagement systems processes, that kind of aspect, you know. Um, Glenn's very much financially based, you know. You're very much the educational aspect, you know. So, again, depending on what somebody needs or somebody wants there's there's a fix or a a fit not a fix a fit for everybody and that's the way i mean rose has just asked sorry i'm talking i always talk to to pick up her questions yeah so you know your biggest challenge going forward julie if i was to book you and i'd love to be able to think well i'm going to book you for 2031 there's setting the goal but if you were to come back here in 2031 you know what sort of challenges do you think you might be talking about when we do it again 
Oh, wow. Well, one challenge I hope that we're not talking about is uh, gender equality, inequality. I hope that um, that gap um, between male and female will have um, disappeared in certain respects. Um, my, I think that over the next few years, the biggest challenges that I think businesses will face is saturation into the market. You know, as in like, will so many of businesses have set up in the last year? You know, will there be so many? I'm not sort of like saying there's been very popular businesses set up over the year that we can do virtually. Mm. So is there going to be a saturation? Will there be a number of businesses that don't make it? Yeah. Um, would be one thing that's going through in my head. But equally, um, I think choice for the consumer will be key. You know, challenges getting your message across, you know, your USP, um, being the forefront in marketing. You know, is your website secure? Is it, you know, getting traffic to it? So it's all these, I think it's the bigger picture, looking at the bigger picture will be the biggest challenge going forward. And and just talking about going forward, we've touched on it earlier on, but we've got this, I keep calling it this golden window of opportunity. Yes. In the next, um, say, every time I say it, I feel like a week's gone by off it. So it starts <laughs> off saying we've got seven weeks. I mean, that's because I say we've got six weeks. We've now only got five weeks. I mean, that's all God willing that, you know, Boris's plan goes to, you know goes well we yeah, don't yeah. know we, we hope it does but we've got we know a period now mm -hmm. as we're coming through towards the end of that tunnel and yeah. the light that the end of the tunnel the light is getting bigger and bigger yeah what advice would you give any business owner male or female as they prepare to reopen their business over the next couple of months and um, firstly it's planning first they should have already been planning for this steve so all the clients that we've been working with have a plan you know and they're executing it so everything's going according to plan. I'm all for a plan. Mm -hmm. um, but communication is key. Communication with your, your customers, um, which they should have been doing already. But if not, get back out there. You know, making sure that things are still working, making sure that you're adhering to health and safety. I, I was just thinking about hotels there and specifically, you know, if you've closed down for a certain period of time, are you ready? Is your building ready to reopen? You know, it's not just necessarily your staff. But it's also is your building ready? Um, you know, how's your risk assessments gone out? You know, all of those kind of things. Yeah. And taking taking people on the journey with you, your potential yeah. customers, your clients. You know, we go back to that slide we had earlier on about constant communication and consistent communication is so important, isn't it, Julie? Yeah, it's, it, communication is key. What are you up to? What offers do you have? But equally, when are you opening? You know, get get people excited about your your prospects. So, you know, are you opening? Like you said, this golden window of opportunity. So, you know, we're we're constantly saying to our clients, you know, five weeks to go. Are you ready? You know, yeah. let's get going. Let's do a countdown. When when can you open? You know, it's getting the excitement, getting the momentum, getting the the passion, the enthusiasm that you've had for your business maybe previously that's maybe dwindled over the last year. Get it back. Get people excited about the fact that you are opening and what products and what services that you can offer. Yeah. And when we talk about planning, I always think about Black Adder, Julie, one of my favourite uh, childhood program series. And uh, the hero in, in those p programs for me is always not Black Adder himself, but Baldrick. Um, because no matter what situation they find themselves in, he's still thinking about a plan, a cunning plan to get himself out of it. Now, where he falls down, and I think many business owners chat find the same challenges, they've got a cunning plan, but it's all up here. And no, it's not right down, up. right down. A plan, I mean, we were talking about it at Profit Club the other day about marketing plans, you know, it's all in good having a plan, but don't then just don't shove in a drawer and forget about it. A plan is mm. flexible, it's fluid, it's one to be changed, you know. Is it working? Test and measure things. You know, you've got a marketing plan, you've got marketing strategy. So we're going to do Facebook advertisements for the next month. OK, test it, measure it. How much business do you get? What's the return on investment? You know, make sure it's working. You know, um, I love in this the quote about insanity. Insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. OK, so if you're doing the same things over and over again, but you're not getting the results, then change it, you know, what are you going to do differently this afternoon than you did yesterday? Absolutely. And, and good question for, for, for those who are listening or watching, you know, to write down and think back on as they have their lunch. But I'm, I'm conscious of time, Julie. We've been 50 minutes already. It's, no, 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 no. It's great. It's absolutely great. But just before we finish, um, I just want to give you the opportunity. And it's International Women's Day, you know, a woman in business. I'm really grateful for you being here. What one message would you want to send out to any young woman 
you know, whether they're at university, young women at school, you know, thinking about their careers or mm-hmm. running their own business, what words of encouragement do you want to leave them with um, this afternoon? Oh, so much, Steve. Um, <laughs> no, I, you know, to me, you can do it. You know, have that determination, that positivity, that drive and ambition. And you once you put your mind to it, that's when you achieve wonderful things, you know. And again, that's male or female, but for women in particular, you know, I had that decision to make. Did I make the right choice? Of course, never regret, never look back and think, oh God, I wish I'd done the other one. You made your choice and made your decisions on the reason that you did at the time. And that reason still sticks, you know? And so have that that guts, that that kind of, I can do it, is all about mindset. So again, if you think you can do it, you will do it. If you don't think you can do it, then you won't achieve what you set your mind to. You remind me of that great quote, I can't remember who says it now, but look back only for two reasons. One is to celebrate success and the other is to learn from it and move forward. Yes but yeah. don't dwell on it yeah. um, and the other side of that is we create things twice in our mind once in reality and once in our mind and it's really important then to stay focused on, on moving forward isn't it yeah of course and I think it's it's key Steve you know like you said you hit the nail on the head learn from the past but don't redo it you know, <laughs> you know learn from it you know have I made it perfect life choices throughout no but I've learned from them and then therefore it's helping me create good life choices now so you know it's it's as we're celebrating International Women's Day, it's people that have inspired you, people that have kind of helped you. So, you know, help is available out there. You know, mentors, business coaches, consultants, you know, um, your mum, your your sister, you know, anybody that people take the help when it's offered, you know, learn, educate yourself because through a business education and having those moments of, oh, yeah, you know, which I still have, oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, as BFOs, as we call it, you know, a key. So, no, to all the women out there, you can do it. You've got this. Brilliant. And it's it's those BFOs, you know, having guests like yourself, Judith, that are probably connecting bits of information that we all know. And the women that are listening to you this lunchtime, they already know a lot of it. It's about connecting together Absolutely. and having that aha moment and empowering them to be able to go forward and drive their business forwards it's been lovely having you with us this lunchtime julie i've got your contact details on the screen just before we go if anybody's interested in learning about profit club the women in uh, women in business profit club or anything else we've talked about this lunchtime whether it's the growth club the book club um our studypreneur package your contact details on screen but i realized julie my apologies i haven't put your direct email so it's julie at actioncoach.com isn't it Julie Cameron at Action Coach, Action Coach, Action Coach dot co dot com. And um, literally, if um, I'm also on LinkedIn, so if people um, want to connect with me on LinkedIn, it's Julie Cameron. And um, yeah, I always love a chat. You know, um, to to me, I know you'd never would have guessed, would you? But um, every day is a school day. You never know who you might talk to. Um, or what tips you might pick up or how you can help people you know so even though you think coaching is not for you then I might be able to help you through somebody that I know do you know what I mean it's you never know and it's having that open mind to those conversations that's key indeed so do do reach out to Julie or myself particularly if you're a woman in business today and you want to have that conversation you know Julie will happily pick up the phone she'll have a chat and you never know what BFO as we say blinding flash of the obvious or nugget of gold just through that one conversation you may get and we'd love to have that conversation about how we can support you in your business Julie I really appreciate you taking time out of your busy day I hope your little ones had a great day at school when you get them up pick them up at three o'clock three thirty whatever that time is and uh, look forward to catching up with you very very soon and uh, but to all our listeners thank you for joining us this lunchtime we are back on wednesday again at 12 o'clock and uh, look forward to you joining us then for those of you who may join us part the way through this recording is both on linkedin and on facebook and of course on our youtube channel so if you've only listen to half of it. I want to go back and start from the very beginning. Very good place to start. I'm back in the Sound of Music Land, Judy, where we started. Um, you know, do very much uh, log on to that channel and uh, you can not only listen to this uh, Lunch and Learn, but all of the past ones as well to many other guests we've had uh, over the lockdown period. But for now, stay well, stay safe. We look forward to seeing you on Wednesday and uh, have a great day. You know, make this week the best week in your business so far. Definitely. Look forward to speaking to you soon. Take care now. Thank you.